Hello and welcome back to the Reptile Goths YouTube channel. As always, I am Morgan. Today we're going to dive back into the world of Animal Crossing and talk about the mysterious oarfish. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the giant oarfish, since that is the species with the most information readily available. Of course, as always, all my sources will be linked down below, but this fish is kind of hard to find information on because of where it lives. And it lives in kind of deeper open water from 656 to 3,280 feet or 200 to 1,000 meters deep in the lower layers of the pelagic zone of the ocean. Now, the pelagic zone is considered the upper layers of the ocean, but that is then subdivided into more layers. But I'm not going to go much deeper into that whole categorization because it's not really relevant here. Now, the specific range of where this fish can be found is not 100% agreed upon by marine biologists. However, in general, it is thought that they can be found throughout the tropical and temperate seas all over the globe. It is very rare to find this fish live just because of that deep open water where it lives and most encounters with the human world have resulted as them being caught up by accident in a fishing net or washed up dead on a beach. However, when they are seen closer to the surface, usually they are in a state of dying or disorientation. Now, when these scaleless fish are encountered, either washed up on the beach or still in the water, they can be identified by their long, flat, silvery bodies with their white markings and bright red fins. The two fins on the sides of their bodies are very long and resemble oars, which is why they have the common name oarfish. However, it has been noted that these colors and markings tend to fade fairly quickly after the fish dies, so a lot of the photographs of the specimens lack the markings in color and seem rather dull. Now, oarfish are a very large species of fish, as we can see in this September 1996 photo of a 23 foot long fish that washed up near San Diego, California, being held by some United States Navy SEALs. However, this isn't even the largest recorded specimen in history. The current literature about oarfish reports that they can get up to 36 feet in length and around 600 pounds. And with that massive size, one would expect them to also be fairly voracious predators. However, this fish doesn't even have real teeth. Actually, inside their mouth, they have what is known as gill rakes, and they use that to feed upon plankton and other small crustaceans floating in the water column. Most scientists believe that the oarfish is likely a solitary species based on the evidence from them mostly being pulled up in fishing nets as one specimen, and this suggests that they do not travel in schools. However, they would still need to interact during their spawning season, and at this time, the adult oarfish do come together they do lay eggs that are then fertilized and float at the surface until they hatch and the little baby oarfish resemble little miniature adults and don't travel through any other larval stages like some other marine species. It is also thought that the oarfish may be some of the inspiration behind the sea serpent myths of old because of their long kind of snake-like bodies. And that is pretty much the only real impact they have on the human world, since those who have tried eating the flesh of the oarfish have described it as gelatinous, and it's now kind of considered inedible based on that. The other real question about oarfish is what 
preys upon them. They are a fairly large creature and in general, fairly large creatures have very few or no predators. Scientists do think, however, if they are preyed upon by anything else, it's likely other large fish like sharks. However, that doesn't exclude the fact that the small juvenile versions of the oarfish may also be fed upon by other predators that do inhabit the deep ocean. All right, well, that's all I really have for you this week because that's all the literature really had for me. So until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you again for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you would like to see more. And if you'd like to follow me on any of my other social medias, the links are down in the description below. Don't forget to check out thereptilegoth.com for all of my articles and blog posts. If you found any value in this video and you would like to help support the channel, please check out my Patreon page. That link is also in the description down below. And a special thanks goes out to my Diamond Dragon patron, Diane V. What you're doing is really helping me fund a dream here. I will see you guys all in the next one.